In the previous segment, we discussed the assignment statement and rules for expression evaluation. So, in this segment, we are going to look at reassignment. Okay. This looks simple enough, basically changing the value given to a single variable. Okay. But this actually is turns out to be a rather powerful and very, very common uh, operation and it needs to be understood properly. Okay. So, the, the rule for uh, evaluating expressions is that when a variable appears in a statement, its value at the time of the execution is used. Okay. So, suppose I write uh, p equal to 3, q equal to 4, r and I write r equal to, equals p plus q. So, the values of p, plus p and q at the time of uh, executing this are 3 and 4. Okay. So, what is going to happen is that those values are going to get used and 7 will be stored. Okay. So, if I print the r out then 7 will get printed. Now, suppose I use r, uh, I write r equals p times q, then the current values of p and q will be used and 12 will get stored into r. Now, if I print out r, the current value of r which is 12 will get printed. Now, reassignment can lead to some interesting expressions. So, suppose I have int p equals 12. What happens if I write p equals p plus 1? Is it even legal? Okay. So, in C plus plus it is actually legal. Okay. So, the, the rule for executing such a statement is actually something that we have already discussed. Okay. So, the usual rule says first evaluate the value on the left hand side. So, the current value of p is 12, you add that to 1, so you get 13. And then the, whatever the result is, you store into the variable on the left hand side. So, 1 is added to 12, the current value of p and the result 13 gets stored in p. Okay. So, basically this will cause the value of p to increase by 1. Okay. Now, this statement is sometimes found confusing by people because writing p equal to p plus 1 is nonsensical in mathematics and the equal to operator is very, very strongly linked in our minds to mathematics. So, this says that the equality in mathematics and in programming is quite different. In mathematics, it is more like equality. In programming, it means this says take the value of the expression on the right hand side and put that value into the variable whose name appears on the left hand side. So, basically equal to in C++ is different from the equal to in math and you should be aware of this very much. Now, reassignment turns out to be quite interesting with repeats. Okay. So, here is a program, I am going to have int i equals 1, okay, repeat 10 times and let us say I write c out i endl and then I write i equal to i plus 1. So, what happens when I execute this? So, in the first iteration, when the loop is, when the repeat statement body is entered, then i will have value 1. Okay. So, because of that, 1 will get printed and the i equal to i plus 1 statement will change i to 2. In the second iteration, okay, what is going to happen? Well, the value that i now has is 2. So, 2 will get printed and i equal to i plus 1 will change that 2 to 3. So, at this point I will have the value 3 and if you keep on going in this manner in the 10th iteration 10 will get printed and I will change to 11. Okay. So, something quite interesting has happened over here. This, this uh, set of statements has been able to print out the numbers between 1 and 10 for us. So, basically this EDM we can call a sequence generation EDM. So, if you want to ever generate the sequence of numbers 1 through 10, then this EDM will do it. Which EDM? Repeat 10 times and i equal to i plus 1. The C out i is not really an essential part of the EDM. We put that there only because we wanted the sequence to be seen. Okay. 
Now suppose we put in this statement turtle sim and we put in the statement forward i times 10 okay, and write 90. What do you think this does? So notice that in this green portion we are not changing the value of i at all. So i will have the same values in each iteration as it did earlier. But this means that the distance by which the turtle goes forward is going to be different in each iteration. So first it will be 10, next it will be 20, then it will be 30 and so on. So this is sort of like drawing a square but the side length is increasing. So what do you think happens? So this is going to cause something like a rectangular spiral. Let us take a look at this. So this program also I have keyed in and it is called spiral.cpp. So here is the program and uh, I guess what I have not put in over here is this weight. Okay. Okay, let me indent this properly because otherwise it does look a little confusing. Okay. So um, is it what we have written over there? Yes, it is. So it is also going to print i, but it is also going to cause movement. Okay, so let us see what this does. Okay. So let me compile it and let me run it. Okay. So it did a spiral just as we expected. Now, you can you should realize that we do not really need to just be generate sequence 1 through 10, you can generate other sequences also. So it is an easy exercise for you to generate the sequence 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. Or you can also generate the sequence 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Basically you can generate these sequences by making slight modification to the previous program. Okay, maybe change what you add maybe instead of add do something else, okay? so just try it out. Now using uh, the assignment statement or rather the reassignment statement inside uh, a repeat uh, loop uh, can allow you to do other things as well. So here is a program which reads 10 numbers and adds them together. Okay? So, so we declare variables in term and s, so s is going to be 0, s is going to have the sum. Maybe we should actually have called that variable sum, but that is okay. So we are going to uh, do repeat 10 times and uh, uh, so we are going to have uh, c in term, so the value goes into term and then we add this value to s. Okay? So whatever value we get, we are going to add to s. So notice that initially s is 0, but in the first iteration of this loop, s will change and whatever you received from the keyboard is going to be added to s. What happens in the next iteration? In the next iteration, whatever the user types from the keyboard, the second time around will be stored into the variable term and that will get added to s. So at the end of two iterations, s will have the sum of two variables. So at the end of 10 iterations, s will have the sum of the 10 variables. So if you type s at the end of it, you will get the sum of the 10 variables. Okay? Now s is serving like an accumulator. It accumulates by summation whatever values are read from the keyboard. And so this EDM we might as well call the accumulation EDM. So you could do other kinds of accumulation as well. You could accumulate uh, uh, by using products for example okay? or you can take the maxima and keep accumulating the maximum. Okay? So all kinds of other things are possible. Now an interesting thing happens, we can compose these two idioms and write a program which calculates n factorial. So here is our basic program. Okay, so this is the first EDM. Okay? So this is the sequence generation EDM and it is generating the sequence 1 through n. Okay? 
Now what do we need to calculate n factorial? Well we want that sequence but we just do not want to leave that sequence alone, we want to multiply all those numbers. Okay? So this is easily done by writing a new variable out called n fac, it is initially 1 and then we simply write n fac equals n fac times i. So the first time around n fac will get multiplied by 1. The second time around n fact will get multiplied by 2, 3, 4 all the way till n. So at the end if we print n fact we will get n factorial printed. Okay? So the idioms as you can see are quite powerful, we can sort of mix them up as well. Now because the assignment statement and the reassignment statement is so commonly used, C++ defines some additional operators. So here for example i equal to i plus 1 is something which appears very frequently and so in C++ it can be abbreviated as i plus plus. So plus plus is an operator and, and it is a unary operator and it can be uh, it can be written as i plus plus which simply means i equal to i plus 1. So it is an increment operator, it is unary and similarly you can have minus minus which means j equal to j minus 1 and minus minus is the decrement operator. Now plus plus and minus minus are actually quite tricky. Okay? Plus plus and minus minus can be written after the variable okay? uh, or before the variable. Okay? So uh, I can write plus plus i or I can write minus uh, i plus plus. Okay? So both are allowed. Okay? Now furthermore I can also write expressions such as k equal to plus plus i and k equal to i plus plus. Okay. So these expressions are legal and as it happens they produce different results and so here plus plus i and i plus plus are different. If I just write i plus plus and plus plus i in isolation then they change the value of i and they change the value of i in a similar manner. But here they produce some different results as far as k is concerned. Now such assignments are described in the book but I believe and many programmers believe that such exp expressions are really difficult to understand. So it is like using really complicated words when you do not need to use them. Okay? So, it is said that uh, when you speak you should use simple words, the, as simple words as possible. So what has happened over here is that uh, uh, these variables were defined in the language but more and more people are saying do not use these complicated forms like k equal to plus plus i and k equal to i plus plus. So indeed in this course we are not going to use them. And I, I will recommend to you that do not use them in your career as well. So just stick to the simple forms. Okay? Same for minus minus. Okay? Now the fragment of the form sum equal to sum plus expression also occurs frequently. So C++ allows such fragments to be shortened to sum plus equal to expression. Okay? So you can also have star equal to minus equal to to represent some star expression or some equal to some minus expression. Okay? So if I write x equal to x plus equal to z then really it is x equal to x plus z. So x is going to become 12 because x is 5, z is 7. Okay? Similarly I can write star equal to. Okay? So here if I write y equal to y star equal to z plus w, note that z and w do not change. I mean this is not, this is not something new that I am telling you but just so if you get confused remember that it is really exactly equivalent to writing y equal to y equal to y times z plus w and this when you evaluate this expression z and w do not change. Okay, so here are some exercises for you to try out based on the material that we have seen in this segment. Okay. So what have we discussed in this segment? Well we said that the value of a variable can be changed okay. and uh, assignments such as i equal to i plus 1 or j equal to j times 2 are allowed, they are useful for generating sequences. Then once you are able to generate sequences you can compute 
expressions such as n factorial and several other uses are also there. Okay. And because we do things like i equal to i plus 1 and j equal to j times 2, operators such as plus plus and star equal to or, or star plus have also been provided. So we will stop at this point and con uh, continue later.